You know, I was kind of browsing through your website, just kind of looking. I could glean a little bit here and there. Um, you're, you know, you started out with the, you know, the uh, Arc One, and you had a 220 kilowatt hour battery pack, and then you switched to in the Sport to a 226. I thought I saw the weight on it somewhere, but do you know the weight of the 226 kilowatt hour pack? Uh, it's about 2,600 pounds uh, for that pack. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, does that include like uh, power distribution or is that just the batteries? That includes power distribution. Okay. Yeah, and, so and we then have any and structure that's part of it. Correct. That's okay. the casing, uh, base casing, fireproofing material, uh, all the busing. Yep. Yeah. So you know, just kind of put in perspective. Uh, yeah, I, I dug back into our past reports, and uh, you know, the Hummer is two hundred five kilowatt hours. And uh, I want to say its pack weighed 2,450 pounds. So you're a little heavier than that, but you you do have a bigger battery pack. And then, uh, you know, the Lightning was 131, and it came in at 1650. Uh, those are predominantly steel structure around them. So what, what's your structure for your battery pack? It's currently a mix of a composite base and aluminum enclosure. Okay. All right. Um, you know, when you start thinking electric electrification, you know, the biggest thing is range. Uh, you know, I'm, I still don't have an electric vehicle cause I, you know, I live in upstate New York and I'm living in Michigan. It's 450 miles. So it's like, if I find a car that has a 500 mile range or a vehicle, you know, I, I'm probably in. Um, but how has that affected what you've done with the boat? I mean, you talk about being able to run all day. Um, I mean, I, I, I know, you know, people say, well, what's your range? And, I, you know, I can say for sure, like I had a, a, a 280 velocity offshore, had an 80 gallon tank. And if I ran it wide open, I could get about 80 miles. If I, if I settled back and run, you know, 40 miles an hour or so, I could get about 150 to 180. Okay. So how does yours compare to that? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's your question, but I also want to mostly highlight that the arc sport at least is a very different use case than what you're doing there. Um, these are pre predominantly wake sport boats used on lakes and rivers. You're 99% of the time leaving an ending from the same place. You know, you're not going to do your upstate New York to Michigan drive in a boat uh, of like a boat like this. You know, it's not a go all the way up the coast. Well, for, totally yeah. familiar with them. Yeah. Um, so at the point that you're leaving an ending from the same position, it really is that question of how do you give someone all day on the water, but range with boats is really hard. Uh, oh, yeah. and it, it's not standardized in any way. Uh, and what you're bringing up is a lot of offshore vehicles will quote range as you were alluding to, where it's like at a cruising speed, you can go this far, um, for a lot of wake sport vehicles. So who we're competing with, they'll quote an hours number. Um, and the reason for this is because the power consumed goes with speed roughly cubed, which means that if you're going five miles per hour in our boat, you could probably go for 30 or 40 hours straight on the battery. But if you're going, you know, 35 miles per hour, it's going to only last you like a couple hours. So it's a huge, you know, there's a 10, 15 X difference in the amount of time only a 30 mile per hour change in speed. Uh, even going 30 miles per hour versus 35 can have uh, like an impact of like an hour on your range or more. And that, that seems insignificant to you when you're traveling at those speeds. So really what we've done is like, we didn't, we didn't come up with a size of a battery pack and then tell you the range. We started the other way. We said, how are people using their boat? Uh, we've collected a lot of data of how often are people going at wakeboard speeds, water skiing speeds, surfing speeds. How much time are they puttering around at five miles an hour? How much time are they ripping it at 40 miles an hour? Uh, and tried to come up with a, a representative like user time at speed curve. We use that to say we want to give people four to six hours on the water. That's a long time. That's what a typical outing would be. 
backing all that out, this is the size of battery that we need. Uh, and that's really how we got to it. All right. Yeah. So that's a pretty big battery for sure. Um, are you guys, what kind of, what is the uh, form factor of your batteries? Are, are you making them yourselves or it, sound, it seemed like you were, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Yeah, we make the battery pack ourselves. Um, what I'll, I won't share too much on basically the suppliers and the supply. No, uh, that's fine. Because I just wonder, curious, like uh, what form factors? It, I think it's prismatic. I'm assuming, and you know, maybe chemistry. If you could share that. Yeah, we can do chemistry. It's an NMC. Um, okay. The the interesting thing with us is that we are in a boat you actually wouldn't be as weight or volume limited as you would be in a car. Um, so we get a lot of questions of why don't you do LFP, uh, the lithium iron phosphate, which is cheaper, uh, but it is heavier. For a boat like this, we have to account for the trailering case because a lot of these customers will drive their boats to and from the lake. And if the boat's too heavy, you're going to be pushing people into like F-350, you know, super duty trucks that a lot of people don't have. Um, so that is actually our weight constraint is towing. So what do you uh, use it like F-250s? Well, we're, or are you able to use a 150? You can use a 150 for okay. our boat. It's going to be about 6,900 pounds uh, for the boat. And then the trailer, I think we're leaning towards offering either an aluminum or a steel, depending on what you need for towing. Um, but the trailer would add about 1,000 to 1,500 pounds on top of that. Yeah, that was going to be my guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so with the batteries, are you doing active cooling on them? Um, we are. Uh, so the ARC-1 was entirely a, a liquid-cooled system, similar to what you'd find in uh, automotive. For the ARC Sport, we're uh, experimenting with a, a different system uh, that should cool similarly, but honestly be cheaper and less maintenance. Um, I won't, again, go into a ton of details about it right now, but... Um, it is, it's an actively cooled system, primarily for when you are charging. Um, I don't know if how deep in the weeds you want to go here, but uh, power consumption on a boat is quite different than automotive. Um, in automotive, you typically have a very high peak power and a low continuous power requirement. Um, this is a zero to 60 time of, you know, sub two seconds, sub three seconds. But then in order to maintain 70 miles per hour on the freeway, it's actually pretty low power consumption for that, you know, multiple hour duration. Boats are sort of the opposite. It's incredibly difficult to get peak power into the water because your propeller mm. is slipping. Uh, oh, yeah, big like, time. Right. It's not like tires on a road. So it's really, really hard to actually get a ton of power very quickly into the water and get a high peak. Yeah. You end up with a lot of cavitation, I take it, if you try exactly. to. Exactly. So you really have to ease into the throttle versus just push it all the way down? Um, the user doesn't have to do this. We handle it for you on the software side. We basically oh, okay. we basically ride the limit for you, so you get the maximum possible acceleration for, for oh, your cool. boat. Um, but then we have a very high continuous power. Our continuous power is very, very high. Like if you're trying to maintain 35 miles per hour, um, you know, you're consuming a much higher continuous power than like an automotive would. <clears throat> but what that means is that when you actually use the boat, so an automotive um, C rate is how people discuss the heating that goes into the battery. That's the ratio of the power over the capacity. <clears throat> In automotive, you might see C rates of like six or seven when you have that peak power. Our maximum possible C rate is 1.6 which means that when you're driving the boat on the water, because the battery pack is so large, uh, we're actually not generating that much heat. So the battery pack is not heating up very much when you're driving. When you're charging though, that's where we can hit really high C rates is you do DC fast charging if you wanna charge your boat very quickly. So charging is more where we're focused on cooling of the battery than actually driving the vehicle. Okay, so then are you looking at closed loop cooling or are you, you yep. relying? Okay, so you're not relying on being in the water because somebody might charge it on shore, right? Correct, um, it, and that's exactly right. Uh, so we have a, a cooling system so you can DC fast charge in or out of the water. Um, and uh, and yeah, we do do a closed loop 
system as well. Uh, gas boats, you know, they have to cool their engine blocks. They'll typically do a more open water system where you'll pump water into the vehicle, run it through the engine block heat exchanger, and then dump it out the side. Uh, we don't do that mostly for maintenance. Uh, it's just easier for consumers to not have to pump salty, uh, you know, algae filled water into your vehicle and deal with uh, corrosion and filters. Yeah, so we could, a closed loop system. Yeah, and I was thinking about that. You know, being out there, you know, with the salt water, that aluminum and salt just don't mix so well. So. But I was just curious. I just, I had to ask that question. And, you know, like you said, you know, with a, with a nice engine, you know, I had a pair of muffs. I had to plug out in the front of the engine and, you know, turn the garden hose on. Just don't rev it up and, you know, to flush it out, doing oil changes and things. 